Hi, comic book readers, and welcome to another live episode of Off the Rack. I'm Sal. And I'm Tiffany. This is, of course, a comic book show where we take the comic books from the past week, we, we, we recap them, we, 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 there's too many we's and re's. We review them. We tell you what we thought about them, and then we recommend comics that are coming out this week that we think you should check out. Of course, there's so much more to talk about. There's news, reviews, and all that stuff in between. Um, but uh, there's not a ton of big industry news to cover at the moment. Okay. Uh, there are mm-hmm. rumors and so forth out there, but nothing like the Jim Lee stuff from last right, year. Right, right, right. Okay, that's Which, good. if you missed that episode, you missed a dinger, a humdinger, if you will. Swing by that episode and so many more here on Compop Returns by simply liking the video, subscribing to the channel, clicking the bell for notifications. There's only 20 or so steps to take in order to be notified when you want to watch a live show on YouTube if nowadays. If you do that, we know that we know how much hard work it was you're one of the special and ones yeah 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 well, just, we, we appreciate it we, we do know. we, we know do how many it. steps it took you to get there it's true there is you can see the the select few that show up in the beginning and that's because of the efforts they took and uh you well, know, their schedule helps too. the schedule yeah, doesn't they have, hurt. like if they happen to oh if they're around yeah, yeah absolutely like if you're getting out of work and you join us whenever we mm-hmm. love that too. yeah we appreciate it you can watch the show after the fact in, in fact or if you want to listen to it you can always uh check out off the rack comics or off the rack reviews uh, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and everywhere where podcasts are found. Uh, give us a five star rating because who cares what the numbers are or the stars? All that matters is that uh, we keep doing this for a living, which we do appreciate. And of course, uh, we can continue to do so by using super chats. Ask a question or comment here on the chat, and we will read it here on the show, and it'll be part of it forever, uh, like these fine people uh, right now. And here we go. This is how we start the show. We've got a couple of super chats. In fact, there's one that uh, this. Handy dandy program that I pay uh, top dollar for did not uh, retain. Uh, Bryce Harriet, hi guys, Tiffany, thank you for recommending Die. Yay! I wasn't ready for it back when it came out, but now I'm a DM and a storyteller, so it hits really hard. Yay! Yeah, Die is definitely one of those books where it like it'll it'll find you when you're ready for it. That's right. It really fits in well with its lore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And comics are like that, you know. They're just waiting for you on the shelves. Like maybe they uh, maybe they don't reach the audience of their time, but they'll still be there waiting. It's why I'm always so like up in arms when I find a book out of print or when a you know series is forgotten. It's like, well, it's just. It, but but if only for mm-hmm. the right time, that book will be there. Yeah. Uh, Hulkzilla, thank you for your generosity. It says Happy Monday. Looking forward to your thoughts on the new Ultimate Spider-Man. Much appreciation to you and the crew as always. Best wishes to you too, Hulkzilla. Thanks not, a lot. Not just Monday. It is MLK Day. That's well. right. Yes. You're the states if you are in the states i mean in the world he definitely had a defect hopefully yes. but uh for the most part it was uh it was an american holiday yes but uh yes happy happy mlk day to you all out there uh and yes i i, I didn't know this there's an ultimate spider-man book that came out this week interesting i didn't hear um, anything about that well uh hopefully we'll talk about it if we do it'll probably be towards the end of the show but uh are there uh did you see any in, any interesting news or any uh any any topics for discussion today uh, that came about in the comic book world. I myself didn't see much. No, you know nothing, nothing but huge. That's, maybe that's okay. I think so. It's nice for, to have a quiet day once in a while. Right. That's that's good. <laughs> this doesn't always have to be drama. No, no. I mean, and and if there is, it's usually manufactured. Uh, but yeah. Um, and uh, what's it? Quick Nards says, "Wish me luck on my last semester of high school." Question: What is your favorite indie book of all time? Well, Quick Nards, good luck to you. Much luck uh, to you. Break a leg out you there. Thank you very much uh, for uh, supporting us, and of course, good luck with uh, the future after high school. Um, take inventory, look around. You know, it'll be there in your brain whether you loved it or hated it uh, forever. So make sure to at least uh, take a minute. You know, like when uh, my childhood friend. Uh, he he moved away long ago, but his parents uh, moved on uh, and they sold their uh, beloved childhood home. It was one of my favorite places to go. And uh, one of the things that I uh, knew about, thankfully, was this uh, this method of like saying goodbye, like get, being allowed to mourn uh, places, things that you uh, would otherwise uh, you know take for granted. And so I went there uh, alone and I was just like, I just, you know, thanked the house for everything that it gave me. And uh, and it makes it hurt less, I think, yeah, when I drive I by agree. it every day. I like that. Um, yeah, and Anthony Bergamini says, Could "Wait, t- what's your favorite indie book of all time?" Oh man, that's a great question. I mean, I think <laughs> I have to say Ninja Turtles because Ninja Turtles is technically an independent uh, movie and comic book, okay. and uh, much more successful than they probably anticipated in uh, both respects. What an impossible question! I know, right? Because you are the can't. indie person here. I can't. I I don't know. Uh, part of us say Saga. Mm-hmm. Part of us say I kill giants. Yeah, yeah. All right. Both of them had a very strong impact on you and yeah. uh, our, our excellent works. And uh, amazingly enough, by two different creators. It's yeah. not like, oh, yeah, I, it's yeah, just whatever yeah. Brian K. Bones working on. Right. Or whatever Kieran Gillen's writing. Exactly. But no. Because I love Once a Future, too. Mm-hmm. That's so right. Good. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, Anthony Bergamini, could Donny Cates' big return be on Wolverine? It could be, if he is, in fact, big returning. I don't know. Uh, I haven't heard anything about Donny Cates uh, since the last thing we heard about Donny Cates. Mm. So uh, I'm wishing him well. I hope it all works out. But uh, I have not heard anything about it, and uh, I don't have much in the way of theories, especially because I don't know the state of Donny Cates. Um, we talked about the uh, the speculation about Wolverine, because, of course, the rumor was that uh, Greg Capullo is going to be drawing Wolverine. Makes sense. Makes sense. I've seen the pages. They're amazing. Um, I would love that. I think a Donny Cates, Greg Capullo, Wolverine would be cool, but I also would be okay if uh, Scott decided to like bomb in for a six to 12 issue uh, run mm -hmm. to just do his run on Wolverine. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool. Right, right, right. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of books that came out this past week. Uh, what do you uh, want to talk about first? Um, I don't know. Well, let me let me talk about a very quick book. Okay. Uh, Transformers number four, or Transformers, as the uh, opening movie narration guy used to pronounce it, uh, from Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer. This uh, series marks the uh, not penultimate, but uh, it's heading towards its inevitable conclusion uh, for Daniel Warren Johnson's art. Uh, mm. D Dubs is going to be stepping back. I believe he's still writing it, but uh, a new writer or new artist will be on the scene. Interesting. To helm the visual direction of the Transformers series um, for Skybound and part of the, uh, huh. you know, the Yenner John universe, which I fully expected, though it was not uh, advertised or discussed uh, in its rollout. Okay, okay. No pun intended or capital letters in that one. But uh, yeah, I uh, th this issue is as as, it, as with every Transformers issue, with every Daniel Warren Johnson issue, full of heart, mm -hmm. full of grit, lots of action. Uh, you know, beautifully and spectacularly, you might even say, depicted. Um, you you start to feel for these cold automatons. Uh, <laughs> but no, I I, Will I do. Will Mike Spicer be staying on? Do you think? I or do doubt you think it. They're going to just go with whoever fits best. I think part of the reason why D Dubs isn't drawing the issue, and I have no idea. We've never talked about it, but uh, I would I would suspect that part of the reason why uh, Daniel Warren Johnson would not draw the next uh, run of Transformers would be because he wants to work on something personal. And sure. if he's going to work on something personal, he's going to need Mike Spicer to swing in and, and color the damn Makes thing. Sense. Makes sense. So I would say I, would, I wouldn't want him to, <laughs> to help color okay. uh, the next series. Well, unless he can do it all. Yeah, I mean, he absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, listen. Let him, let him take that. Let, that, that no, if he has the opportunity, definitely take that job. But I don't want his work to suffer yeah, in absolutely. any way for the next Daniel Warren Johnson independent book. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, uh, you know, Spike's father learns a valuable lesson. Uh, uh, Optimus Prime gets a new appendage uh, from an unlikely source. Uh, I don't want to give away too much. It's only four issues, and the, the issues read real quick, which is why it's important when you have like a book that has spectacular art. Uh, if it does read quick, if you realize, oh my God, I just got to the end of the issue and I've only read it, I, I, I spent like six minutes. Go back, just look at the art. You know, give mm -hmm. give it give it the time it deserves. Um, but uh, good luck to Skybound and their endeavors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope it works out for them. Awesome. Um, I read Luke Cage this week. Yes, it's, Luke Cage Gang War. It's, it's like four issues. It was like, why not? I'm here. Right. Well, let's do this. I'm um, already here. Why the hell not? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and honestly, like, like I said, like I kind of just wish there was a Luke Cage book, I, or like a mini, another mini that. Well, wasn't if it sells, into... maybe we'll get one. Oh, to an event. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like they are very much like yes, things are happening in New York, and obviously the mayor of New York needs to react to that, and so this is the book for that. But it's also an opportunity for you know Luke to be a hero again, even though there's a, a an entire act that says you can't do that. But basically, <laughs> he's kind of like in this issue, he's like arrest me because mm -hmm. like otherwise you, you're going to die. Like there are a bunch of cops there, and they're like okay so fair enough you know what i mean yeah uh this is written by rodney barnes by the way or by ramon f box uh you know this this is fun because it's luke it's jess it's danny you got cloak and dagger in there that is interesting for me though people because... love to just shoehorn those two into something because they know they're never going to get a book well yeah so it's like might as well use cloak and dagger here well like so like i don't know when this is all going on in terms of you know gang wars like time frame in with what is going on with um x-men yes like the mutants right now oh yeah well. uh because technically i, I think dazzler oh no it's dazzler not cloak no sorry well no, it, was dagger. Her. it was dagger sorry i'm, I'm i should stick to my guns dagger was taken over mm -hmm. for a bit mm, by, yes uh, vulture yeah in the nightcrawler book so what is this whatever no no it's not whatever. welcome to marvel no because here's the thing is dagger is a, a character that's not used quite like very frequently at all. right so it's it should not, be consistent it, at the very least it's just with like one... oh suddenly two books have her in it like i don't understand yeah yeah like that's right 
Well, you're, you're dealing with two different offices. You're dealing with like the street level office versus the mutant office, and they're both able to use cloak and dagger, dagger because nobody regards them. I just, um, I just, I just don't get that. Yeah, that, that I just don't understand because it's such an easy thing to not do. It would have been mm-hmm. very easy to not do here or there yeah. or like to go like, hey, or to address it by being like, hey, be like, hey, I know you just had a really rough time of it. Absolutely, you cool with like being in this. Like, mm-hmm. you cool with being got my getting my back here. Like, I, I'm, I, know. I don't know, I don't know. Um. Regardless, you know, the, the action in this is fun. Uh, you know, Luke and Jess's, you know, um, relationship and their, and their, you know, the way in which they operate, their, you know, just their decorum together is, is, is charming. Mm-hmm. You know, the kids are not really involved with this. You know, they're at home. So it's just them getting to be heroes without having to worry about anything. Okay. Uh, you know, they, they punch big robots. All right. That's, that's, that's what it. the cover promise. He also is not wearing his suit in this, which I kind of appreciate. As much as I enjoy the idea of Luke Cage like having, having a, a superhero, superhero costume, suit, which he has had a yeah. costume of sorts, um, it's also just fun to see him, you know, unmasked, being Luke Cage, being like, "I'm the mayor," and also like, you know who I am. Right. Like, no, Luke Cage's uniform is whatever he's wearing at the time. Yeah. For me, that's always been the case. Right. It was fun to see him in it, and who knows if maybe he'll put it back on at the end. Um, but he takes that off in order to suit up. In something else by the uh, end of this issue, thanks to uh, Danny. Um, so if you see an image of Luke out there in like a giant mech suit or Hulk Buster, you know why armor, noted as the Cage Buster. Uh, uh, that that's where this is from. Um, so yeah, you know, I think it's fun. I do wish it wasn't tethered to this. I don't know if Luke would have gotten a mini without this event, though. So I guess I'm thankful for yeah. that because uh, it's fun. You know, it's not the but it's not my favorite thing, mm-hmm. um, but it does make me wish that we got some more like Luke and Jess minis. It doesn't have to be an ongoing. Yeah, like, that's true. Like the Rogue and Gambit ones. I think you're going to be more likely to see a Jess book that Luke is also in sure. than a Luke book or a Luke and Jess, Mr. and Mrs. X, Mr. and Mrs. A kind of uh, right, story. Right, right, right. That, that's fine. Yeah. You know? I know. <laughs> I'm okay with I would, I would read that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh let's see here uh austin d a donardo a doardo adordo says uh this might be odd but what made you decide to leave teaching and pursue youtube uh a number of factors which include which were up to and including uh an unsatisfying career and a very uh and, and a potential um revenue stream i was like oh we're making money and i'm making you know, because the the field was so crowded at the time, uh, this is pre-pandemic year, so like people didn't really expect uh, to need teachers back then because mm-hmm. there were so many of them tripping through the doors. Like you would in my district or in the areas that I lived in, uh, you'd find anywhere between one to two thousand applicants for two job openings. Yeah. Um, nowadays, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I keep a one ear to the ground occasionally regarding the education industry just so I can be aware of it and so I can be like, oh yeah, no, I'm no, I know what you're what you're looking for. But a lot of the stuff that I was trained for is now considered to be bunk. It's really funny to see how like education grows and it changes. Evolves. It evolves, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I I ditched it because I like I was more satisfied doing this and I wanted to try it and it was more uh, it's more lucrative to be honest and uh, and and more fun. Mm, nice. nice. And uh, Cora Valentine, MLK Day, woo! I don't know. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't read. I didn't read what back issues episode comes from, but the what did what is it you I say? Don't I don't remember what back issues it comes from, but the what is it you say you do here bit makes me smile every time I think of it. Keep it keen. Will do, Cora. Thank you so much again. Like many, like everything that comes out of my mouth, this is a reference. Uh, if you ever never checked out Office Space, watch Office Space from Mike Judge. It's one of the funniest movies made of its decade, uh, if not you know in the top ten. Um, of all time great worth checking out what would you say you do here okay. uh, but yeah uh, more books more um i read batman and robin number five from joshua williamson and this time by nicola i'm not even gonna try uh that's fair Sismesha. um this is the uh this is the the issue okay so it took four issues to get here we've seen a couple of issues or a couple of moments in the series where damien is in public high school but this is an issue where we see the premise realized okay bruce wayne is at like a parent teacher meeting or a like fair 
Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the kids are playing soccer outside. The, the, the moms are seeing Bruce Wayne, like passed out hot dogs. Like we're seeing like Bruce, May- Bruce Wayne, like, you know, slumming it with the regular folks, which right. is exactly what I wanted to see from this. Pre- if you're going to do it, if you're going to, if you're going to like divorce Batman from the Bat family, you find the time. right. But, or at the very least, like focus on, you know, like he's just, it's just him and Damien in this universe mm-hmm. or this time period right now. Um, have him be a uh, like single parent at the school. You know, it's fun. Um, Damien, of course, is uh, Damien and Batman are investigating who the identity of Shush is. They think that it's uh, Damien's principal. Uh, Damien is dealing with these like soccer hooligans, not the real ones from Ireland, but rather the like douchey ones from America who think that because they play football, they're like awesome. And so they like bully Damien for drawing like manga. It's. Oh, Okay. Yeah, it's it's cute and fun. Reads like a YA book. Uh, unexpected Batman story. A lot of uh, very much um, in the. You've, I've never seen Batman look more sympathetic as Batman than in this book. Okay. You know, like every time Damien says something, it's like Batman suddenly woke up from a fog. Uh, because Damien will say things that are just so telling that like you are a tra- you are a traumatized child. Yeah. Who's been robbed of a childhood? Yeah. So like every time that he says stuff, Batman's like, I'm I'm really sorry. Like. <laughs> Or like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, and it's like, that's really nice. Like, yeah. oh my God, how cool. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, and and it's just, it's a, it's a unexpected Batman book. It's certainly the most unfamiliar Batman you'll see on the shelf. Right, um, right. But a lot of fun and uh, the art picks up or keeps up uh, with the previous, uh, of course, the original usual book is written, is drawn by Simone DeMeo. Uh, but this time, um, still keeping in step. Okay. Um, but fun stuff. I, I, I enjoy it. Um, the titling is also hilarious. And I don't know if it's like tongue in cheek or if it's deliberate, but it's it's fun. OK, and like the like the, like the issue this titling? issue. Yeah, this okay. issue was called School Days, D-A-Z-E. And I was like, oh, boy. And then the next issue will be called High School Sucks, which can't argue with that. And maybe it's not for you. It's I'll be not, clearly it isn't. No, I think it's hilarious. You. I was like, that's fun. Just love it. Kids are gonna be like, oh my god. He's right. <laughs> this Williamson guy speaks to me. Yeah, I can see that. Right? I can see that for sure. Right? It has to be that. Let's go with it. I assume. It's uh, that. Jade E Z says, uh, mm-hmm. I pitched over on Instagram Batman Zuranar versus Batman Who Laughs. Make it happen. But seriously, I love the show and you guys keep up the good work. Uh, or keep going. Thank you very much, Jade. Yeah, I'd watch that. Zuranar versus Batman Who Laughs. Yeah. If only to watch one of them kill the other. Because sure. I'm sick of both of them. Uh, the Milkman. Uh, Hickmania is running wild, brother. It's true. <laughs> it's going to run over you. It is. What are you going to do when Hickmania runs wild over you? And Bear Farmer, I've been on X-Men kick lately. What's your favorite? And X-Men, X-Men's kick. What's your favorite X-Men movie? I get stuck between First Class and Logan. Uh, I think it's X2. X2's got to be still the top for me. I really do like Logan. Logan's great. Yeah. The Wolverine is The Wolverine's bad. also quite good. I do like a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Deadpool, I like a lot. Um, X2 is my oh, favorite. Oh, yeah, though. Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what it is for me? Hmm. Like I really Oh, a Days of Future Past. Yeah. Forgot about that one. Yeah, it's pretty... I like that one a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know what it is? Like, I... I don't know. I always had, like, the desire, obviously, for, like, Rogue and Storm to be... The like, way that they should be. The powerhouses that they should have been. Um, and I just feel like we haven't quite gotten that. Mm-hmm. And n- maybe we'll never get that. But I think that's why I just don't have, like, I just can't get into those other movies as much. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I know I should let it go because it's a different iteration. It's a different take on them. And that's fine. It should be. Like, yeah. go for it. But I can't get over it. No. So. We we didn't think we were ever going to get it. So, for it's me, totally like, when, when Rogue shows up, I was like, that ain't Rogue. That's Jubilee. But okay. <laughs> Like I literally, I was just like, okay, yeah, you know, I don't care. I'm just happy to get an X Men movie. Yeah, you know. But is is she a great rogue? No. You know, it would end. Up, could Anna Paquin have been rogue? Eh, maybe. I wouldn't have cast her. I think she does a great job for I what that know. is. But you know, if I'm looking for '90s rogue, which is what Marvel clearly is heading towards, that ain't it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what'd you read? Uh, I read Wolverine 41. I said I would check this out. Uh, you did. It, it literally has a parental advisory on it. It says on the cover, the most violent Wolverine story ever told. Sure. I I, find, I, I think it's hard to, to that, pin that, that down. That is a tough act like to follow, really. I, like, I Can you really make that claim? Well, you know, is it? That's, 
I, I don't. Out of I, all the Wolverine books I, you've ever read, is it the most violent? I don't know. You know, it is trying to be very. It's hi, trying to be hyper violent. Here's the thing about this. Okay. I love that it's parental advisory. Got, it's got the moniker on it, Fall of X, right? Obviously, this has to do with where Wolverine is right now. It's directly tied into what he's been doing in an X-Force. Um, it does take time to explain that to you. So if you're just reading this, it's yeah. fine. It, it touts itself as being um, Sabretooth War Part 1, right? Yes. Big event Written for by Wolverine. two different authors. What? Um, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was just uh, Percy. No, it's two two writers on this one, um, which I think is interesting. On the cover, it's Percy and Lavelle, and then on I appreciate this on the credits page, they flop it. It's uh, Victor Lavelle, Lavelle and, and and Ben Percy on oh, writing. That's cute. Uh, Jeff Shaw and Corey Smith uh, doing like art art for this book. Cool. Okay, Jeff uh, Shaw doing Wolverine. All right. Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah. And um, like. There's nothing wrong with this mm -hmm. at all. And I think it's actually a smart move and, and we can get into that. But like, I'm really right now, I'm in the fall of the House of X. And yes. I understand their desire to do this book because it's like, it's a great setup for what has been leading up to this point. Sure. Wolverine has had a, his hand in a lot of things right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's like, well, this is the chance. This is the shot. Let's go for it. There's a bunch of saber tooths. Let's, let's jump in there. He yeah. didn't really get a chance to experience too much of actual Krakoa or saber tooth didn't um and wolverine has like you know some of his family around him up in x-force laura's there uh akiru is there um and and you know he's like feeling it right now because he's he, most of the mutants are gone yeah. gene is gone scott has been arrested and is going to trial potentially execution mm -hmm. uh you know like he's Pulling close to the people around him. It's his birthday. Oh, coming up. Well, that means the sober Saber has to come because that's what he used to do in the nineties. Yeah, so that's literally what's happening. Um, you know, Sabretooth has like his group of saber teeth. No they notes. They don't call him that. I just that's that's your. I don't, what are saber tooths? Right, no, it's got to be. I can't, I can't say that. I, I mean, can't say saber tooth tooths. is saber tooth is a proper noun. So technically, if there are multiple saber tooth. Then it should be saber tooths. Saber tooths. But even then, but saber teeth is just as good. No, it's not. He's got his group. Yeah, you know, he got like calf saber tooth, savage land sa lady saber tooth. What? It's just you know, there's all sorts of saber teeth. Okay. They're all running around, right? And essentially, they are. They go back to Krakow, and they're gonna like you know be like, all right, here we go. We're well, they're gonna take over. Oh, they like they didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo. So they are, um, you know, they show up. They're like, oh, right. Oh, so they pee on everything. They're like, "This is mine now." Mine, 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 mine. Um, they just see the you know sentinels around the island. Kid Omega decides to show up because I guess we need to get him off the table. It'll be interesting to see what Percy does with that in um, X Force. Okay, uh, Kid Omega dies. Oh, and is eaten. Oh, I mean, like that's the kind of like they're like we are we are really good. And I was like, sure, okay. Whatever. I mean, like. I don't know. It's no violent than more violent than other things I've read. So right, maybe right, that's right. what it is. Am I desensitized? Well, or, or does it feel like it's egregious? I don't know. You know, whatever. Um, so they, you know, they eat him and, and then and then they go, they figure out where to go and they go up to where, where they are in the greenhouse, you know, and, and, and they fight some folks and they, they kill, um, Yiru or Dokken. Um, <laughs> And uh, you know they they cut them like him and another mutant up, and he they spell it happy birthday from their limbs. And I guess that's what they're saying is that's, that's pretty violent. Yeah, those are limbs. Right. And and again, he, here is what you're hearing from my voice, and it's not that I'm like this is dumb, this is whatever. This is Saber Tooth and Wolverine. Right. This here, is what you'd expect. Here is what you'd expect, right? And why I think that for me, I'm like meh, meh. I'm sure this is going to have some effect on what Wolverine is doing. This is mm -hmm. obviously going to affect what's going on in X Force. Unfortunately, I think this is therefore I'm going to have to follow this going forward. Yeah. Um, it's not really what I'm looking for from what's going on in the Fall of House of X. Yeah. Right. Like, it's just right. Not... This is not in tone or in theme with the with the Fall, unless it's like we're we're we're, we're this is the final confrontation between between Saber to the Wolverine. Right. Something we didn't build up at all during any of Hox Pox or the or Rocks. Yeah. 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 Um, that said, I get why they did this for a couple of reasons. Maybe I don't have any insider information or I don't know anything. Um, 
But one, I mean, if you're Ben Percy, who knows how long he'll be writing for these characters. Yeah, probably not as want, long. You want to tell the story, right? You want to tell a Wolverine saber tooth story. Yes. Getcha, right? Right. Additionally, not everyone has been loving the Krakoan era. Not everyone wants the fall of X. Not like, you know, not, not everyone cares about dominions and uh -huh. all that stuff, right? So what do you do? You sell them onto something that they can wrap their heads with around and it just happens to be taking place within the guise of this other right this happened thing. during fall it's of like, x it's, it's why like, no one else is involved it's like it's within the parentheses you know what i mean it's yes like, oh, here yeah. it is and and so i completely get that it is it is definitely wolverine has been that book that has like often been tied to things that directly were going on with krakoa and then sometimes just felt like it was its own thing because it's wolverine you can do that wolverine drifts in and out right He's yeah intrinsically tied to what's going on with x-men mutantum and krakoa yep but also he goes to madripoor and like whatever you know I mean, he does his thing so i totally get them wanting to make sure this book was coming out yes like if, that, it, it's, if that a, is, it's an alternative to you're still reading stuff about Krakoa, and this is definitely set within like Krakoa and Tech, and there's people from X Force there and all that. Yeah. But the fact is, it is just is a Wolverine and, and Sabretooth book, and they're gonna battle it out. People are gonna get in like the, the way. way. Yeah. You know, so right now, obviously, there's no uh, resurrection protocol, so so Kid Omega is dead again. Like uh, yet again, forever. And that is that is the other thing too. Like, he's died several times at this point. It's kind of like okay. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Right now, that here's the thing, too. Like, is this happening? I don't know because, like, Kid Omega was like in the midst of doing some stuff. For, like, right? Maybe so... it's like a projection, or I don't is know. he going to pull an old man Logan and then pop out of all the all the saber teeth? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. To me, my body parts, and then they're Foomp? just going to foomp. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I'm not saying it's not good. I'm not saying it isn't. <laughs> you know, well executed. I'm just saying, like, I was like, okay, yeah, I, this is doing what it needs to be doing. It's just, I'm definitely more interested in dominions and stuff. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, just just from a, a cursory glance at a couple of pages, it suggests to me that it's no different than like a Mark Tessiera, uh Wolverine saber tooth fight. Sure. You know, like I I picture uh, Klaus they, Jansen. They, they haven't actually even fought yet. No, I'm just seeing yeah. violence, but I'm seeing saber tooth commit them. I mean, you know, it's like, all right. You know, yeah, right. Like, it does. It does seem bloodier than Predator versus Wolverine. Which oh, sure. Is disappointing to be sure. <laughs> also written by Ben Percy. Would have been interesting to see that. Right. Right. Um, but uh, yeah. Okay. Well, there uh, yeah, you go. I'm not so like... if you're if, if you're looking for an alternative, if you're like I'm not I'm not digging on Fall of X. I don't like any of this crap. Maybe Wolverine is the, maybe Sabretooth War is your uh, is your right. is your way out. Or if you're looking for just like more of like a little more, it, there's definitely an increased amount of violence in this book, and I'm not saying that's bad. You know what I read? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe, maybe that's the, the, the that's part of it. Like maybe that's what this this event is going to be hardcore. Right. It should have said the most violent Wolverine story you've ever seen so far. <laughs> cool. Right. Well, Dante Cook says, uh, Hi, Silent Tiffany. Did you hear that the deluxe edition of Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow will be released this July? It will be just in time for my 31st birthday. That's fine by me. Well, happy birthday, John, happy Dante. Birthday. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, yes, I did hear about that. Uh, it's going to have, quote, bonus material. I love bonus material. My guess is it'll have a sketch or something. I don't think I knew it was July. Yeah, I, I just heard about it yesterday. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, if you love that book, pre-order it if you like, or if you have never read it, you know, and you want a big hardcover edition i don't even know how big it's going to be mm -hmm. i just know they're calling it deluxe uh the 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 promotional material for it is the same cover as the first issue or the trade paperback but in a disappointing font it says deluxe edition next to it it's just that's dc's approach to this whole thing yeah make a movie yeah uh win some awards or at least get nominated for them but for the love of god don't spend more than more than you have to eight issues everyone's favorite number of issues for a series uh chunky jesus uh thanks for generosity says come pop woo i really only picked up a hobby uh, a little this hobby a little over a year ago and found uh, you all right at the start uh i genuinely uh only oh think God. i've stuck with it because uh of you two so thanks for introducing me to this world Yay! thanks chunky jesus for your support and uh for digging on this hobby oh, i hope you enjoy you it so you know don't let uh this thing spiral out of control i'm glad we could be there to help kind of like guide you a little bit on this journey you know don't be afraid to go off the beaten path but also you know just uh just enjoy it yeah. don't let the noise 
uh, pollute the conversation or your own enjoyment of something. Not you know, just to, just dig on it, and when you stop, take a break. When yeah. you're when you're done, you know, with your break, come back. Um, and the way to do it is just to be like, oh, uh, I heard something is pretty cool. I'm going to check it out, mm -mm. you know, and then do that and then go from there. And then, you know, wh what uh, what drew you the most, the creator or the uh, or the character? Mm -hmm. And then if it's one or the other, you go in that direction. Then you go and you find the next thing. If there is a next thing to right. be found. Uh, so, yeah, but thanks, man. Absolutely. What else we got? Yeah. Uh, Rise of the Power of Ten. Powers of Ten. Yes, Rise of the one. Powers of Ten. Came out by Kieran Gillen with art by R.B. Silva. Yay. Looks, Looks great. Of course. Um, really love this cover. You know, it shows you this, like, future team. You know, we, we're doing, or it's like poetry, guys. It rhymes. It started <laughs> with uh, House of X and Powers of Ten. Yep. And now we have the fall of the House of X and the, and the rise of the Powers of Ten. Yes. So, uh, we all knew. If you had read um, Powers of Ten, you should have been prepared for this to be uh, probably a little time traveling, a little potentially jumpy. We haven't done much jumping except in this one. We, mm -hmm. we went ahead 10 years. Right. Um, definitely should have seen uh, Dominions and, and all of that come in. Because right. that is very much what is a part of Powers of Ten. We talk a lot about Moira's... Uh, various Ugh, lives, yes, the different timelines in Powers of Ten. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, Rise of the Powers of Ten. We we're going to talk a little bit about that too. We get a couple of, of graphics that show us, um, you know, the timelines, mainly focusing on the Sinisters with the incorporation of uh, Moira stuff in there as well. Yeah, Gillen obviously very much is into this whole idea of sinister and a sinister one or Nathaniel Essex wanting to reach dominion status. Yeah. Uh, to be outside of time and, um, and space and such. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, um, this is, this is very much about that. Right. But ties into the thought of dominions, the thought of the like 10 years in the future where it's like Omega Sentinel has been sent there in order to prevent the downfall of, of, nimrod oh yeah and um at, at the hands of of the mutants who, who would use the phoenix force to like burn him out essentially uh, okay um so she comes from like a a, a a timeline where that happened and so she is sent there to prevent that from occurring mm -hmm. um and um in doing so uh the humanity has also gotten in the way just as it did in the moira timeline yes. right and like there are still like Dr. Stasis is still working with them because he's like, Well, you can't beat them, ha, ha right? Like <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. Um, but you know, Moira's like, Wow, that was like a thousand years when I experienced it in the future, and here it's it was 10 years. Yeah, he did a lot really fast, right? And so Nimrod is like a attempting to connect to the Dominion to, to meet God. Yes, yes, of course. And we're not talking about the sinister god, no, we we're talking about the dominion the, like a, like, like their the, the f what yeah. phalanx or whatever the whole thing right yeah um but that's like all all part of this essentially the, that this like will all break down and uh you know sinister will become the dominion anyway right right like he'll he'll overtake it yes um which and, definitely was not part of of of, of hawks and pox when it was it originated but uh but how do you feel about that uh you know i i appreciate it because i felt like we were never going to actually deal with the dominion because there was a lot that uh that hickman i felt like was indicating with that talk maybe he might have done that down the line maybe not i don't i don't I'm not sure i always thought it was partially to the idea that that's kind of how the mutants were beginning to form where like they were going from like individuals to like a, like a collective. And then they went to a planet. You know what I mean? Like, even though that wasn't in his original plan, it did kind of work within it that. Did, that yeah. You know, this like joining the fact that they were creating those circuits, the idea that chimera, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it seemed like he was using it almost as a cautionary tale in right. a way. Yeah. Um, so the fact that Gillen has kind of picked up this ball and is, is keep, moving with it yeah um yeah like i i do appreciate it um i do of course wish we could see like whether or not this was you know like even hinted because like hickman never really dealt with sinister but obviously that was a mistake in the first place to put sinister into this we all we all knew that mm -hmm. um uh so i i always wondered what he wanted to do with sinister yeah. if anything and as i understand it he's 
given a million interviews with a million other people that aren't us that have that has essentially spilled every bean that possibly can be spilled regarding what he wanted to do. So, right. of course, we've, we've met him. We could talk to him. Additionally, him. that's like what he wants to do now post everything that's happened. Right. That In context, always... it's like, what? Well, yeah. Yeah. It's impossible to, to determine at this point what would have actually come to fruition because there's one thing for someone to have like notes and go like, yeah, we would have done this. This is where but, we were going. But those will also be colored by what has occurred now. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I would have done that or maybe like whatever, as opposed to what would have happened naturally were he actually, we need that timeline. We, yeah. know, we need to be able to look at that timeline to, to actually discover what he would have done um, with it. But we're not here to talk about what Hickman would have done. No, 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 no. We're talking about what Kieran Gillen is doing right He's now. He's doing right now. Um, which we see like, I, I love this moment right at the beginning between Gambit and Mystique where like, ah, yes, it's so good. <laughs> it's so, so good because obviously, you know, Rogue and Gambit got a lot of great play uh, during Krakoa. Before that, they've been married. Um, you know, the, the marriage has kept up. Uh, you know, he's had a deal with his mother in law's, yep. uh, what was mother in law, mother's in law, yeah. And then Destiny came back, and then it right, was right, both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, they're not fans of Gambit, no, they're just or at least they didn't approve, they're, they're not like he's never good enough, and he never would be. And but no the, one would be, but Gambit, especially, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And in the end, like Mystique's like, you know, you really made Rogue happy, like she recognizes that. Yeah, that, like you know, it was fine, and he sacrifices himself in order for her to essentially be rocketed out so that she can share the information that she has gleaned mm-hmm. um, via Sync, because Sync has taken on the role of professor in this like ten years in the future, uh, where he has they have like a like an Iron Man suit that has like an AI like imprint of Tony within oh. it. Uh, Captain Krakoa is Kamala Khan. <laughs> All right. Wolverine is there and he's just Wolverine. I love that. Everybody is altered. Yeah, everyone is some version of and then themselves. And Wolverine is like, hey. And I'm here too. And I'm Wolverine. Right? <laughs> uh, Kitty Pride is there. She's now Shadow Tiger. She consumed a death seed. So it's like what's left of her. It's okay. cool. She's super tall and strong yeah. and it's it's really fun looking. And it really does fit with where she was going. Yeah, and it fits in with where Wolverine was going, if you recall. Like Wolverine, you know, that's, that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> he survives you survive and kill um, That's additionally what you do. wolverine what i like about this too is wolverine was a thousand years in the future with moira yes during That's what I'm saying. dominion like he was with her yeah he's the one who needed to be there and i'm like yeah great i'm glad that he's here right yeah, like, yeah. That's excellent um you know we, we see that obviously um everyone was right <laughs> like cyclops was right like that like it was again like, get your with, t-shirts with, out yeah get your t-shirts uh that omega sentinel and nimrod were not here. gonna help yeah they were not here for humanity they don't care orcas was just a red herring exactly <laughs> that said stasis had been working with children of the vault and like basically it was like how do you solve the problem that we have in front of us and you know they're thinking they're gonna do this but you know what i fed it to them and they have like the children of the vault have like more time than oh like, right basically he created well, sorry not just the children of the vault but he created like a like a super mind computer thing then fit it into there and then got the answer from that okay and then terminated all the children of the vault He's oh. like, listen i know you're gonna fix this yourselves in like 30 seconds but like i'm gonna do this thing so essentially like he is going to infect the dominion in order to become it but obviously you know nathaniel essex becomes the dominion yes and so he arrives and it's like oh no ah, right um i guess they um we, it is revealed though that remember how um in fall of house of x1 uh i think it's in that i'm not 100 percent. Mm. don't quote me on which issue it's in uh xavier pulls rasputin yes to his aid because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, he has his own little group and it's it's her and it's um it's xavier and it's um oh my god what's his name cypher <laughs> cypher okay you know, i was trying to come up with his real name like it's not you know mutant code name right doug there it is it's doug thank you doug. uh they're working together they've got their own machinations uh, occurring okay and uh essentially uh rasputin fails in what they were hoping would prevent the dominion from occurring she kills stasis he's like all right here we go i'm gonna become the dominion and she kills him and it's like yeah but the essex was always going to become it exactly like it was that he knew that that's how it was meant to go mm. because every time because sinister had his like moira safe scumming set up yes right? yes so like every time he found out how someone came into a dominion it was erased from his mind because essex set that up mm-hmm. ahead of time um and um 
so like there are all these answers of like oh well you know dr stasis found out this way and orbis stellaris found the dominion this way and you know what i mean yeah like, so all the answers are there so he didn't know about any of this stuff until xavier helped him to discover that mm. um but obviously we're bringing in the moira save up we're talking a little bit they give us this great like battle plan of like here's how this all kind of went down there's a bunch of information we've got a bunch of direct uh, uh, redacted stuff including the the no place which i was like yeah the no place is back that's fantastic right <laughs> um and, and so it's like all right cool so now it's like we've kind of failed and now we kind of knew that was going to happen so this is xavier and so we got to move on to the next thing here we go next thing right cool it's coming what they're what are they going to do they're going to go back in time to before moira's powers developed and kill her oh that's what xavier's plan is yeah he's like that's that's it that's that's what we can do or we could shoot her with that depowering gun that she invented she really well yeah maybe they back then that. and maybe that's what they'll do maybe they will like kill and then we'll undo the whole damn thing bingo and then we and then we'll all get pouches and move back to the manor and we'll and we'll fight purple sentinels and uh mr sinister will be back and he'll wear a big blue cape and magneto will be mad and he'll be back to life and he'll get a purple costume with a big helmet right It'll be awesome jubilee will inexplicably be like 10 years younger <laughs> And so here's the here's my major question for everyone. Yeah. All right. So does you, this excite you? I mean, it excites me. <laughs> well, this does. And the prospect of it going back to the 90s does not. Right. Well, yes and no, because if the ending is satisfying, it doesn't matter to me. Right. Because then you could because you're jumping off probably no matter what. Well, no, but like for me, I'm like that's the point of a story. <laughs> yes, is to be satisfying. Yes. Is to is to be. It's not to worry about what resonant. comes next necessarily. Like, yeah. Because I'm looking at it from the I want this story, not yeah. like what we're gonna do with like in the next like twenty. Yeah. Years. This isn't a Marvel I just, movie. I care about I, what's going on right I now. Wanna, I want to enjoy what's happening right now. Um. No. My question is, are they gonna pull one of these that like? Are they gonna try to like salvage Moira by saying it's like this was she knew that this is how this timeline was meant to go, and and either dealing with like is Gillen gonna go. The only way to stop Nathaniel Essex from becoming a Dominion was for Moira to betray everything and everything she was and to ruin everything in order right. to save everyone. That would make a lot of sense that, like, yes, this was all part of, like, Moira's not evil. Right. Or at least she's not, like, she's not a stupid, evil robot. Additionally, are they saying instead that she's, like, the only way to stop any and all of this from happening is for me to have never had my powers. And Probably. the only way to convince you to go back and fit and to stop that is to help Orcus. Is to, and... is to essentially make you think I'm a villain. Right, right. That would work for me. Right? Like, are we going to attempt to salvage this character by saying that, like, Moira's 10th life yeah. was like, she knew that this was the only way was to remove herself from the equation. From the equation. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. That's probably what's going to happen. Right. Because that makes a lot of sense. But. Yeah. This is not the first time. Mm that uh present day intrepid x-men mm -mm. with good intentions mm -hmm. related to charles xavier go back in time yes to kill someone right to prevent bad things happening only to accidentally kill someone else and cause the age of apocalypse yeah so my question is yeah i think we could probably assume that it makes a lot of sense for us to go in that route the, the, the route you suggested. The not Age of Apocalypse 2 route. Yeah. But what if they did do of Age of Apocalypse again? <laughs> Where, okay, we're going to shoot Moira. And then, of course, you know, young Professor X jumps in the way. He dies. Sure. You know what I mean? Moira right. becomes the Professor X of that era. And it's just Age of Apocalypse all over again. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like we, it, we're we dangerously close to Age of Apocalypse 2. Yeah. Yes. But it would have to be at the expense of a very emotionally satisfying conclusion to the entire yes. Hickman era yes. or, 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 or Hawks, Pox, Fox, Rocks and Docs. And of course, Fox uh, era of X-Men. No, well, there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I'll take either. All right. But like, as I was reading this, like Moira was mentioned, she's there mm -hmm. for sure. And then like, obviously with the solution, I was like, okay. Yeah. That's a good solution. Right. Because it also puts everything back. Yeah but marvel also like marvel's funny because like they love to put everything back but they also hate putting everything back where they're like put it back put it back wrong that way people are that way no one's happy because they're wait for their new stuff uh but if you recall that new x-men teaser that they released uh -huh. has the age of apocalypse font use like on it i was like uh-oh mm -mm. uh-oh coming 2024 
the sneak peek this November. Do we get a sneak peek? I don't remember one. Do you? In the chat? Let us know. Was there a sneak peek in December? <laughs> what was it? Was it just that uh was it just that Ryan Stegman cover of the oh, original maybe. X-Men? That, that's that, not a teaser. That's a... I like someone saying, uh, oh, the teaser they didn't do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would make sense to me. That would be what it is. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I mean, that That's sounds smart. great. You know, don't do a sneak peek because then someone's going to figure out something and oh, just yeah. spoil everything. So I'm glad. Yeah, just they wait didn't. for someone to just leak it to Rich Johnson and then we can just all speculate about it afterwards. Maybe it's not coming until December. And yeah. So they're like, we'll do it in November of 2024. And then we technically <laughs> got it out. We didn't of lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could be. But uh, yeah, that sounds fun. I'm Yeah. Hyped. No, I, I liked it quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I know you mentioned that people on the internet we're talking about how like drastically different this was from fall of house of x and yeah it someone seem like they're correlated or they don't yeah someone like was mad related. because like it was a good book but it didn't have a direct relation to fall of the house of x well here's what i would say to that uh powers of 10 when it was coming out didn't like you're like where is this going yeah yeah it was almost completely disparate from its from its uh companion additionally the person who's writing powers um just you know, in the past few years has successfully worked on uh, Avengers uh, versus or in humans versus every like, yeah, yeah. Uh, axe axe um, and also sins of sinister he, like he's a great collaborator. He's really great at, at managing larger events and also working with others. So I feel like this is going to go somewhere. I'm hopeful that it is. We'll see. But I feel like these these stories will probably start to weave as mm -hmm. we go along cool we'll, we'll see because like since it's sinister those three books were so disparate at the beginning and then by the end they were almost like one book all three that mm. came together so i don't know okay anyway. well uh before we uh wrap up uh with our final uh book i wanted to talk a little bit briefly because we watched mm -hmm. the entire echo series from we did. Uh, disney plus yeah uh, this is a uh, unprecedented in a lot of ways but precedented in many ways as well uh the fact that like you know echo was established in the hawkeye series the fact that kingpin was the main antagonist or at least the looming antagonist of that mm -hmm. and the more or less like a co-protagonist of this series as well um so we we saw it coming and we saw a lot of like you know this was telegraphed um but uh, unprecedented as much as um for one thing it was a uh you know a mature rated marvel show released on disney plus they and by the way uh in retrospect not terribly mature uh not like that it wasn't uh dealing with mature themes but the did not deserve uh or require any of the warnings that marvel provided though i can imagine marvel uh studios is uh as concerned as dc is about like the you know the uh, backpack ability uh the the toyification of their brands i get i don't know there were definitely some moments there's like the violence is yeah the is, big the big roller skate scene uh or sequence was more violent than i think the majority of the show i think it was just more you know the, the tone was more mature yeah so i think i think your it standard i think it Plus. earned it yeah that's fair it didn't it there was nothing in this i think that was any more egregious or on par with any of the most violent things punisher not included from the netflix marvel shows like mm. i i think that kingpin smashing a man's head in with a door frame was still more violent than anything that happened in the show sure and that was like but, the first episode but this like yes it was on netflix which is a, yeah which a can do it that has um children's programming on there mm -hmm. uh but disney plus is definitely it's disney first of all it is more of a family first yes and a lot of their like marvel shows have been aimed more at families i definitely understand them being hypersensitive to absolutely the violence in this and to make sure that like people, people know and then so they can say like, we warned you right it's like when you're going on mission to mars and there's like a warning in disney world like every like 10 feet that's like don't go on this ride if you if have any of tiny. these things. Like, don't do it. Like, right. if you have a heart condition, if you have this, like, don't do it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hear it. You're yeah. going to sue us. No, it's true. Uh, but yeah, drops on Disney Plus, drops on Hulu. But the other thing that they did was uh, they released the whole damn affair yes. in one go, which mm -hmm. uh, speaks volumes to me. Uh, I, I think it says that the show uh, was not, it didn't test well, I think, sure. for them internally. I think that they were worried that it was going to be like another flop or the very least that it was going to be met with disdain or rejection and so rather than like hear about it every week they were like let's just put the whole fucking thing out and just move on and i get that uh i i get that but 
Um, it's a shame because I think it was a I think it was a competent, fun show. Uh, certainly more fun than previous uh, Disney Plus uh, Marvel offerings that I've seen. I think it was. Uh, and and while I was c- clamoring for a street level show. I was like, yes, finally, here we go. Mm-hmm. And then the first two seconds, there's like magic in it. And I'm like, all right, damn it. I, uh, it still I, felt more grounded than I think it could have gone. Yeah, no, you I know? agree. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, but uh, I dug it. I thought it was fun. Yeah. I thought it was, uh, you know, fun. You know, every episode was as long as it needed to be. It didn't feel overlong. It didn't mm-hmm. feel like it overstayed its welcome. Um, it earns Echo as a protagonist for this show. It also allows for Echo to be this kind of like, you know, she's not going to be a power player in the MCU. She's not going to lead the Avengers. She's not mm-hmm. going to like, you know, to put the coup d'etat on Kang. <laughs> but then again, no one else. Uh, but, you know, but she exists and she's part of it. I think that might explain why they had that horrible Marvel spotlight thing. Too interesting. So I really hated that. I it's, was not a fan. It it's looks such, like because it's old school. They like it made it made it feel like 1940s Hollywood. And yeah. I'm like, number one, get your head out of your ass. Number two, it's ugly and simple and stupid. Like for a studio that owes everything to comic books, mm-hmm. every design element they go with that makes it, it takes it further away from its source material. Mm-hmm. Like the Marvel logo, you know when it came up during like spider-man in 2002 the flipping pages the sounds the images of comic book art that is iconic and it says like we owe our origins to this we're doing that Uh when marvel studios changed their logo to that like look at all the things we made (laughs) look at all the actors who can't make movies anymore in these in this franchise like oh boy it's just like what yeah. It's just like it, it's it's a it's a self felicitating like congratulatory back pat. Uh, it feels like a victory lap of design. And then this Marvel spotlight thing came out, and I'm like, get out of here, because what are you saying? Like what? What? Oh, oh, you're spotlighting Echo? Oh, that's fantastic. I hope you continue to spotlight other characters. You know, like what the hell was Hawkeye then? You know? Oh no, but we introduced Hawkeye. Oh, okay, fine. Right. Right. You know. Right. What are you doing? Like it's uh, it's ugly and dumb and a waste of space. Just get it out of there. But the other thing they did was the Marvel Studios logo. They didn't do the big fanfare. No. Black and white. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yes. Yeah, that you liked. Because they did it already. They did it with Marvel Knights right. when they were launching those Marvel Knights movies. I believe uh, Ghost Rider and Punisher Warzone had mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. It's like that's good. Now. Yeah. I think their concern was now, I think they would have continued to do Marvel Knights as like the kind of like Marvel Knights or Marvel Max Mm -hmm. would have been a great way to like establish what the... They're not going to go Max. Do you know why? Because there's a freaking competing streaming service called Max. Bingo. (laughs) Could it be as diabolical as someone at like Marvel leaked a memo and DC heard about it that said, oh my God, no, it's not. There's literally no, but uh, at all. But yeah, but I think just saying Marvel Studios not doing the fanfare, having the, the, but the logo's there and it's black and white. I think that's great. I think Mm. it's fine. Simple, easy, moving on. Yeah. Great. Um, But yeah, uh, overall, I don't want to get into every single episode. I just want to say that uh, like everybody, like all the actors did a wonderful job. Uh, Alakwa Cox, of course, as Maya Lopez. Fun to see her continue, uh, you know, for a completely essentially mute character. Uh, Didn't miss it. You know, she's she is on screen. She is in the moment. She earns the protagonist role. Uh, You know, I'm there for her journey. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm. Yeah, I love Tantu Cardinal. As, oh yeah, uh, Chula. I thought she did an incredible job. A lot of range. Absolutely. Uh, uh Graham Greene, her, you know, her her grandpa. Yeah, her on-screen husband or Tantu's on-screen. Yes, husband. yes. Uh, I love the differences in their personalities, and of course, uh, Cody Lightning playing biscuits. I just, for, just, I was like, I, for some reason, I was like, yes, biscuits. Yeah, I'm, you were really rooting I'm for biscuits. For you, biscuits. I like biscuits, but I was like, what is it? What's his real name? <laughs> Biscuits. 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 Yeah. I was uh, overwhelmed by having worked with hearing impaired people in the past or working in that department for uh, my old high school and uh, and, and, and in, the, in other districts as well. Um, I, uh, I was overwhelmed by the amount of use of American Sign Language and mm-hmm. how like everyone did it yeah and how they 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 did it to such a degree that when kingpin doesn't it is a character point yes i'm like that's so smart and cool and i loved it yeah um 
its execution was beautiful and like it didn't draw away it actually was more uh engaging i think than like subtitles normally mm-hmm. i was like this is really cool it was just it was it was it was a frank earnest and like you know it just it brings a different um type of acting yes you know like there's just a different like range of emotions that you can you can get and i thought everybody did a really great job um yeah and uh, I really I, here's the thing. I have no idea how. I mean, I know they they put a uh, like a thank you for the collaboration from the Choctaw Nation. Yes. I have no idea how how accurate how it is. Accurate. So, I mean, obviously, I assume it isn't. Obviously, like, I, not all of it. Yeah, most of the time, I assume because like any stuff that's tied to the Marvel stuff, I'm sure they they altered. Yeah. Um, but like you know, in terms of like you know dynamics and you know festivals and celebrations yeah, iconography I like, and like i was like this is cool and like yeah. hopefully it's accurate like, right uh, hopefully but it was they it... really it was a good collaboration i have no idea exactly exactly no i was uh, like this music is cool was really fun in, in the entire show right i, I, I like oh yeah you know, the songs you mm-hmm. know music the like i music's on those things where it's like i'm not a music person like i don't have that deep understanding that a lot of people Same. do and have that deep connection like i like it and i know what i like mm-hmm. i can't tell you why i like it i just do yeah. um but like you know when something works really well i'm like yes and yeah I, and I, I just enjoyed it I agreed enjoyed it. yeah um obviously there's somebody we need to talk about but you know yeah uh the use of the kingpin uh <laughs> fantastic uh at first i thought oh you know kingpin will probably be like a looming threat like he will oh no he'll be pretty much every episode hooray yeah uh d'onofrio of course owns this role this is his role to keep as long as he wants i hope he wants it forever he's great uh it was really fun um and i and i um I'm interested to see where it takes him. You called the post credits reveal did. at the end of the series, uh, and I make it makes perfect sense. It works really well. It. I hope it's really fun. I hope they, I hope they 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 maximize that potential. I think it'll drive Matt nuts, and I can't wait to see that. Uh, I want to see Kingpin interact with the Marvel Universe at large, and I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled with this. Um, yeah, and the and and the use of Kingpin while also like connecting him directly to Maya and making it part of her journey. Not just being like, here are all the things we didn't get a chance to use Kingpin for, for born again. We're just going to throw it at Maya. You know, it's right. no, it's directly related to her character and it's great. Uh, just, I loved it. And, um, and it like, it plays with the, the, in the comic books, Maya does shoot Kingpin in the face with guns. He does survive from them. He does have like patches over his eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, and he does recover from that somehow. Um, in this, they do the same thing, and they just make it part of it. And I'm like, yeah, that's great, loved it. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm hyped. I, uh, yeah, I'm hyped yeah. for more Kingpin. Oh, he's just, he's incredible. Like D'Onofrio just really gets this character. Yep. You know, he's able to carry over stuff from Daredevil, from the Netflix shows, into this without making it feel completely. I mean, it is contingent on that, but his stuff with Maya. Oh is, yeah. You know, they they try to you know make it new. Um, mm-hmm. You know, reliving how he became what he is. Yes. Um, like you brought up the sign language thing. I really love that point of contention, and like I love that the show took a moment to address it because it's like he goes out of his way to spend money. Yeah, he creates time, like a new technology, which is actually like really useful and great. Right, but he only keeps it for himself. <laughs> he keeps it for himself, and he only does it so because he doesn't want to do something else. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to do something for someone. I shouldn't else. have to learn it. Right. That's like, and it's like. It is just so the kingpin. Like the writing for him, I thought was really spot on in yeah. this series. So it's like if you're worried about Disney's voice for him, don't don't. Apparently, like they they seem to really have a good handle on him and who he is as a character. So yeah. I like that quite a bit. I know it's great. Um, yeah, like I like you know like I I love that concept of like him being like, no, I love you. Yeah, I ref- I literally refuse <clears throat> for the entire time I've known you. I learned like one thing. Yeah, and that's it. And we see like his family, like her family All did them. it without like, you know, because they do, they don't need to say it. Like nobody like I, I, he, he insists on it so much. He doesn't understand what that means. It's so mm-hmm. great. It's so yeah, great. So, yeah. so excellent. We even um, get to see when he was a boy. Except he doesn't say that. <laughs> he doesn't. And I think they were deliberately avoiding it. He, like he says, when I was 12 years old, when I was 12 years old. You mean we were watching that? I was like, you were like, you mean when you were a boy? You mean when you were a boy? Would you say that was when you were a boy? (laughs) Fantastic. Um, yeah, so great. They were avoiding that on purpose. They were. (laughs) Sal's gonna say something. Yeah. We don't want to, we're not going to, we, we heard enough about it. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, loved it. I thought I, it was a good show. I do like in the chat, there's a question of like, somehow his eye returned. I'll tell you how his eye returned. 
Yeah. You have, he threw all the money well, at it. Clearly, like if he can create an entire like, like contact VR, lens VR technology yeah, technology that allows him to understand American Sign Language flawlessly and to communicate, yeah. he has enough money to find a way to get a new eyeball. Well, and I think like uh, there's magic involved as well at the end, so I don't. I, I think it's repaired. I think like whatever they did, you know, because he couldn't see out of it. I think I think it's fixed. Oh yeah, I mean, she definitely worked on that too. But I I I don't know. We don't know if he could see out of it or not. We yeah, don't know if it was healing. We don't know. We're in that patch. I yeah, don't know. yeah. All I know is, uh, you know, in the comics, he doesn't keep that patch for very long. Right, right, right. He's but a comic book character. It's a comic book character. And like, I kind of appreciate that. Yeah, I I do too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but yeah, uh, kudos to the team at uh, at Echo for for making. Yeah, it's only it, you know it's not a huge buy in if you want to try it out. It's only five ish, uh, episodes issues. Yeah. I did it. I did yeah. the thing. No, but it is. It's only five episodes. Those episodes are all, all under an hour. The last episode is under forty minutes. Yeah. There is a lot of like Maya being like angsty, but you know she's Whatever. young. Yeah. And the show goes out of its way to explain the reasons why, and I appreciate that. So exactly. So uh, let's talk about uh, Ultimate Spider-Man number one from Jonathan Hickman and Marco Cicchetto. This is the uh, debut of Spider-Man in the new 6160 Ultimate Universe. Uh, let's address a couple of things before we talk about this book, oh, okay. uh, because some folk might not have read it or they might not be familiar or they might be confused. Okay. This is not the 1610 Ultimate Universe. Right. I, I know that some folk in the chat or in the comments might be like, how could you like, how could you possibly harp on this at this point? I promise you there are people who read this, who thought this was the ultimate Peter Parker from the 1610 universe what? created by Brian, Brian Michael Bendis. It's not, this is a new universe. It is immediately hot off of the last ultimate stories, ultimate invasion and uh, ultimate, whatever the hell, uh, both by Hickman. Yes. Uh, setting up, this new universe. Um, we are in a brand new universe. We are dealing with a Peter Parker, Spider-Man who is not Spider-Man who in fact lost, like he was robbed of his abilities mm -hmm. by the maker at the age when he should have become Spider-Man. And so instead his life pers proceeded in a different way. And it's successful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in a, in, 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 dealing with a very interesting version yes. of his character yes 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 uh, but yeah so just so you know new character new peter parker new mary jane new universe um and dealing directly with the fallout of the uh the last ultimate story that came out uh, a few months ago from hickman mm -hmm. uh which uh dealt with the a, a you know, retaliatory decision uh, over taking satellites to destroy us, uh, an area, of blaming it on Tony Stark, etc. It's like a whole thing. I couldn't care less about any of that stuff. You're Spider-Man, yay. Um, and that's the thing that I'm really concerned about is that, like, I thought, oh, this would be great because, like, Spider-Man is, you know, always set apart from the Ultimate Universe, even in the 1610 Ultimate Universe, where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, here's Spider-Man, but, like, and there's a bunch of stuff happening over there. And occasionally Spider-Man has to deal with it. You know, like Ultimatum. He's got to deal with it, but he'll his story will be the best part about Ultimatum. And it won't even really, he won't even be in Ultimatum. How about that? You know, great. I think there's no way he won't be a linchpin or some, in you know, undisputed factor mm -hmm. that will be about this whole universe i couldn't care less about the universe i couldn't care less about the the ticking clock element i couldn't care less about what the maker's true plans are who the who ultimate doom is i, I don't care about anything it, it, about this I universe completely forgot all of that yeah well and it's so I'm just, I just it's only this. because it was super boring and pretentious but like this is very much in keeping with the original ultimate universe because when i was reading ultimate spider-man i could not care less about what was happening mm. in the ultimate universe people were like oh my god did you read ultimate 3 i'm like hell no it's written by Jeff Loeb and it looks like trash. Why would I ever read that? And they're like, well, it sucks. And I'm like, oh, who, who'd have thought? Well, you know what it doesn't do? Affect Spider-Man. <laughs> Hooray. So it's very much in keeping with the Ultimate Universe where it's like, oh man, a bunch of nonsense is happening in the Ultimate Universe and I couldn't care less about it. But Spider-Man's cool. Right. Great. I mean, here's the thing. I'm hoping that X Men's cool because Peach Momoko. Well, and that'll be <laughs> that. That is that was like done. You know what I mean? Like Peach Momoko like did all that crap. Like that's done like a year ago. <laughs> you know, th that has nothing to do with yeah. the Ultimate Universe. In fact, I think that it's almost deliberately so because, you know, Hickman like wrote that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, like Hickman wrote X-Men. He he didn't anymore. Right. I can imagine Hickman wants nothing to do with Ultimate X-Men. Right, right, right. Uh, but yeah. So, um, but of course, ironically, Jonathan Hickman is writing Spider-Man. Right. Something that I think has been rumored that he'd always wanted to do. 
Um, and so occasionally you will see Hickman Spider-Man occasionally, like his, his Fantastic Four, uh, during Secret Wars, etc. Sure. But uh, yeah. Um, anyway, this is the story. So Ultimate Spider-Man, um, Peter Parker was robbed of his spider powers, so of his destiny, so to speak. So he proceeds uh, with his life as though that wasn't uh, ever a factor. Um, what it results in is that uh, he and Mary Jane are married. They have two kids. Uh, and uh, through no fault of his own, yeah. he does lose an important member of his family, mm -hmm. but not the one you'd think. Uh, Aunt May is killed in the explosion uh, that frames Tony Stark uh, for, you know, terrorism. Right. Uh, but he loses Aunt May at like age 35. Right. Now, in right. the current like span of this book, we then reveal that uh, he did not lose Uncle Ben. Right. At 15. And instead, Uncle, Uncle Ben is here now, yes. alive, a widower. Yeah. And working side by side with J. Jonah Jameson I, as editor of the Daily Bugle. Can we just talk about that dynamic? I think it's fantastic. I am I am here for that dynamic. I yeah. love those two. Two father figures of Peter Parker's life, whether he wants one or not. Yes. But dealing with a Peter Parker who never had to deal with the responsibility that Spider-Man gave him. Right. You know, a Peter Parker that Uncle Ben isn't necessarily proud of. I think mm -hmm. not the way that he would be of Peter today in the main universe mm -hmm. or in, uh, in the original ultimate universe. Well, this issue really set up for me how much he has to lose. Oh my God. Like I, I finished this issue. I was like, this is freaking incredible. I, but I was also like, Peter has so much to lose right now. It, like, it, it was such an irresponsible decision to make at this point. But I get it. Like, there's like, it's basically, this is like, this is storytelling magic here. This yeah. is like, this is like a Neil Gaimanism, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's just like, there's like, there's something like, universally telling Peter Parker something is wrong. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that because Peter was robbed of his destiny to become Spider Man, that somehow fundamentally, cosmically, he knew it. Mm. And so he always felt less than. He always felt that he was missing out mm -hmm. and that causes a different kind of neurosis that peter parker has peter yep. parker is destined to have neuroses he's going to have a guilt complex it's just a question of what will cause it mm -hmm. being spider-man causes the guilt complex that sets up with great power comes great responsibility not becoming spider-man causes a guilt complex that he was never spider-man to begin with yeah he was never special well, this is the Peter Parker who was like, I was never special, despite the fact that he's surrounded by specialness every single day. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got children. He's got his Uncle Ben is alive. Yes. His Aunt May was there to help raise or at least be, be impact his children and his, and his, and his, and his family. Mm -hmm. He has a decent paying job at the Daily Bugle. He has everything he's ever wanted. And yeah. yet he is unhappy. Well, here's what I think is interesting. I think this is also, and I don't know how much Hickman's going to play with this, but like it feels like this is a Peter who takes zero risks. Yes, he's a he's a reporter at or he works for the Daily Bugle, but clearly he's not making a big splash. That's right. No. Yeah. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like when the takeover or the like shifting of the bugle happens, like Peter's not even had doesn't even have a seat at the table. Yeah, that's right. Like he's not anywhere near that. No, like, it's his uncle who's important or yeah, his uncle. And it's, it's Jonah who's important. That's right. No, like Peter, two uncles. So Peter that's really Parker. what it is. It's like Uncle Jonah and Uncle Ben over yeah. there. Right. Like he's no, Peter Parker is an elder millennial. He represents a generational fatigue yeah. and feeling of f like generational failure. Yeah. Like he represents 35 year olds today yeah. who feel like they missed out on something that they were promised was supposed to be awesome. Yeah. No, he's... And, and, and as a result, they're afraid of risk and they're afraid of failure. Oh, for sure. And, and you know, he knows what, like he has a good setup and yeah, a good I'm life. sure there's like a, part of him that's like why would i do why this? would i risk that and it's like because they're like because the universe is trying to set things right well yeah so, exactly like, but like but is it right now like that's and that's the real question right. like, as a like a, you know feeling a kinship for this character for a variety of reasons <laughs> uh I, I i would say like what like a hologram just told me that i'm supposed to be a superhero yeah but, you know and that you know that my destiny was robbed from me but like is that a responsible decision to make now? Should I answer this like nagging feeling in my soul to do this thing that by all rights makes no sense to do? Maybe he thinks like once he gets it out, 
of a system. Uh huh. Like he'll just. Go I back don't think to he's that. thinking that. I'm I, sure he's this is a person who is like who is so beaten down by himself. Yeah. You know, despite having everything that like one would objectively say, like, oh, you have everything. You know, he feels like he's still missing out. Yeah. No, I, I, and I appreciate the conversation he has with MJ. Like, yes. Peter is not so irresponsible that, that he, he makes these decisions this, without and the then people. tells her afterwards. He's like, you know, I want to, I want to do this thing. And I like it. Initially, she thinks that he wants to uh, like, leave the bugle and yeah. join his uncles. Right. I'm just going to call them uncles. Uncles Jonah and Ben. Yeah. yeah like, absolutely. I, I They're can't. his uncles. That, that, that's who it is. Yeah um you know in, in their endeavor even though like he's like how could they do this how could they just make this leap mm -hmm. like they like literally like they got they left the bugle right the idea is oh in the story it, kingpin takes over the bugle and they're gonna like be, it's gonna be, no, become well, kingpin is like an owner i think of it yeah and he's an investor and yeah. he's an advertiser and so like the investors essentially are like you guys are making too many waves and we're not seeing i guess the profit they want or yeah. the the story they want out there so they exactly find the right person so jonah's out but he leaves on his own without well, they, they want Jonah her. to fall online. So Jonah quits and then and Ben then they, follows flo close behind. Yeah. And well, they assume Ben will just take over. And I love that. That is such an incredible storytelling moment. Yes. Where Ben's like, like, ah, ah, excellent. <laughs> and then you just see him like, huh, and then he just goes to the elevator and joins Jonah. And I'm like, that, we know how that conversation went. Yep. And that Robbie's going to take over. But like, you know, like those two leave, they go to a bar. They're like, let's start our own thing. Okay, let's do it. Okay, Peter, let's do it. Peter's yep. like, Peter is like, how could you possibly make that kind of decision? Like, yeah, like who who could just sit down and make a decision like that? Yeah, yeah. Not Peter Parker. Not this. Not Peter this Parker, Peter Parker. For sure. No. Yeah. Um, but I love that conversation where Mary Jane's like, you supported me when I like wanted to, you know, you know, move and and go and like start my own business, mm -hmm. and you know, like I'm here to support you with that. And he's like, that's not what I mean. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, oh. Yeah. No, I'm I'm thinking about like leaving you and the children alone while I fight goblins. And she's she gets it. But does she? I don't know. And I think that's gonna be the interesting dynamic yeah. is like she gets it in as much as she is a partner in a marriage and her partner is expressing a desire for more. Mm -hmm. And that it's not like an extramarital affair or some kind of like, you know, business venture. It's like I I I she knows him better than anyone else, or at least that's the premise. Right. Based on like the limited screen time we've had for these characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the implicitness of it. And I think Hickman is very much like he knows he's he's competent as a writer enough to be able to say, like, because there's an elephant in the room here, which is that people are embracing this book regardless of whether they like it or not. Because of the tagline, right? Like the the, the log line of like. Pete and Mary Jane are, are together and they have kids. And it's like, this isn't your Peter Parker. Yeah. This is not the Peter Parker you want to have Mary Jane and children together. Right. Is a new character. We'll have to see. Right. But like, but Hickman knows, you know that, right. Or at least he's leaning on the fact that like, you know who Peter Parker is. You know who Mary Jane is. You know what the relationship is. So you assume that she is all in because that's who she is. And I think that that's actually deliberate and good and i don't think there's that he's pulling the rug out i no. think that it's like you're supposed to be like good because we because there's only so many pages we didn't have enough to be like to really reinforce like that they trust and love each other like no they're married they have children we get it mm -hmm. so like when he said but this is a woman who knows that her husband or a partner in a marriage who knows that their partner is feeling unfulfilled right she's like you do it then yeah well okay so here's the thing and maybe it's just because i'm coming from reading a lot of kieran gillen lately you know the power of story. Like he loves to, to play with that. Loves to play with the 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 tropes of story. Totally. You know the, the all of that, right? Yeah. So maybe it's that speaking. You know, I'm thinking. You know, Mother Righteous recently, like mm -hmm. writing on pages, and then her. Like, and then, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that, turned, like you know, like that type of thing. Yes. To me, her that one panel of her saying "Go get him, Tiger" is like again, it's everything. It's the power of the universe. The exactly. universe. Is like Mary Jane's, like I meant to support him in this like yes. i do support him but like this feels right like saying this like mm -hmm. something akin to you know face a tiger you hit the jackpot yes like, exactly feels right yep like this is what was meant to happen like and i don't know if that's me just placing yeah that ascribing story to it, <laughs> to but, it but, no I, mean, it I think it is, is because it's reinforced at the end right when he finally makes the decision to do it what tips the scales for him is remembering the two most important people in his life his uncle and his wife yeah telling him to wake up to do it yeah and to, to go get him yeah to embrace your destiny which he does and then on the last page he becomes spider-man and i believe based on uh some teasers for the next issue that uh it's not fully formed and i think that might actually explain the like um 
the variant covers. That's all speculation though. But sure. like the fact that like the variant covers for this issue, he's got the red and blues. He's got the sensational Ben Riley suit. He's got the black and white suit. Like it's, it's a lot of different suits. And I think that the idea here is that he is, um, he gets to pick. Yeah, he shouldn't have any suit. It's no suit. It's black. Yeah, okay. Like it's it's a it's a canvas. All right. And he's going to decide what kind of Spider-Man he's going to be. Sure, sure. Or he's going to be a different Spider-Man for different scenarios. Like right. in this suit, I'm going to do this. I mean, this. But I think that the idea is that like maybe because I think Stark in the like uh, in, in the in the hologram suggests that like the suit will harden or it'll decide. Mm. You know, like it right now. It's it's it'll cover your body and protect your identity, but like metaphorically when you become spider-man it'll pick a suit yeah, for you inside is a pico tech stealth suit to mask your identity and a bioorganic catalyst well that's the yeah, yeah that part but like it'll it'll become the spider-man you are meant to be right 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 uh, but yeah uh that was the part where i'm like oh yeah that's right this whole universe and stuff and it's like okay I, yeah why not like I totally forgot all about that stuff yeah so i very much was like oh okay cool yeah um we just, can we are you can we talk about Chichetto's we should art? oh Chichetto's art is uh fire on all cylinders I think it actually looks a little better than like other so Chichetto work we've seen in the past good. I mean he knows like Chichetto knows that like you know more people are going to be reading this one issue than probably like the last several issues of his like of, of other runs combined right so he needs to bring his a game but his a game is absolutely on display we cool. see emotion we see character we see uh you know I have issues with like different artists and their ability to render inorganic versus organic uh, depictions. Like buildings are great, but faces aren't so great. This is everything is great. Emotion, character, design, location, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking MJ and Pete have never looked hotter. Oh, together. it's true. Like I'm like, these two are just the hottest people in the world. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. They're the best looking 35 year old. you ever met. <laughs> like, holy shit. Those two. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, those kids are going to be incredible. Yep. That's some genetics at work right there. Like, damn. Yeah. It's damn. Pete, right? You're going to be in trouble when May grows up. No, it's true. He's uh, like, he's like, I'm just going to become Spider-Man. It's easier. I can't. I can't. Yeah. He's, she's got my, she's got my brains. Mm -hmm. Your her mom's sass mm -hmm. and looks. No, mm -hmm. no, it's gonna be a problem. I can't, I cannot handle her as a teenager. Yep. Uh, but uh, there, the, this book is also not short on character moments, like very quiet. I mean, the whole book is mostly dialogue. So mm -hmm. like you get this wonderful moment. I mean, obviously like the, the, this book is playing with convention. It's playing with your expectations. It knows that you think mm -hmm. that uncle Ben's dead. So the big reveal of, uh, of Uncle Ben being in charge of the Daily Bugle is like, yes. yes, like that's a big moment. Well, he's managing editor. I, I was under yeah. the impression that Jonah he, was Jonah's in charge. In charge. Yeah. Ben's like Robbie Robertson. Yes. Uh, but uh, the sequence of Jonah with the tie is oh, the standout sequence. Oh my God. Issue. Are you kidding me? Mm. That freaking. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I can't wait to see like what. Ben and Jonah build. I can't wait to see what the paper is going to be. I can't wait to see Peter's reception. Like, I can't wait to see the reaction to Spider-Man. What's I, the What's the bugle going to do about Spider-Man? What's their paper going to do about Spider-Man? I know. Listen, I'm sure for Hickman, having a ticking clock helps him in terms oh, of like, yeah. crafting a world. But like, I just want to. I just want to like live in it. I just want to like wade in this for yes. a little bit. Like, it's just so excellent. Mm -hmm. it, it's incredible. Yeah. You know, I, I read the first Ultimate Spider-Man because you suggested that be a place I could jump in. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that. And I got to tell you, like, this is, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a totally different thing. Yeah. But, like, it has the spirit. Of, like, it does. Of, being different. Exactly. Exactly. It it, it embodies the idea, the title Ultimate Spider-Man. Yes. Feels like a completely different thing. It is as radically different to the mainline book as it was when it debuted in 2000. Yeah. Or 98 or whenever uh, yeah. the first Ultimate Spider-Man came out. It's radically different. Yes. But distills it, hopefully. Well, and the thing is, unlike the Ultimate Spider-Man from previous, Bendis' Ultimate Spider-Man for me, is that that was like a distilled, this is Peter Parker. This is who Peter Parker is. Let's go. But now. Mm -hmm. And by now, I mean, of course, 24 years old. But uh, this is not your Peter Parker. Right. This is in your universe. Hell, Daredevil's a blind preacher. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. These are really great touchstones to remind you. Like, yeah, that this is just, not the universe you yeah, know. Yeah, it's just gentle reminders. It's like, hey, this is this is all different. Obviously, yeah. if you couldn't guess by like some of these interactions, how I'm so afraid that one of like the, Jonah or Ben is gonna die. Yeah, I'm so terrified. I mean, of that's that, the thing. Now that, it could be either of them. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Damn it. Right. And and any th this is one of those things where it feels because of like a couple of very like you know off the beaten path decisions, anything can happen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. All right. So uh, the next issue comes out at the end of February. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think that the, I mean, apples to apples. You compare Ultimate Spider-Man number one to the latest issue or to the first issue of the newest run of all of Amazing Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this just torpedoes it out of the water, but because of uh, for a variety of factors, um, you know, not the least of which is the art is uh, King. You know, we're using the top tier talent. Like this is yeah. Ultimate Spider-Man number one is what your top books are supposed to look and feel like. It's yes. supposed to be the top of your the, the the top of the barrel of your talent and your of your of your talent pool, um, and innovating in a way that uh, feels you know familiar yet different and surprising and uh, and and satisfy satisfactorily surprising. Yes, and also it's like a really good hallmark and indicator for me how much people seem to be enjoying this book and spider-man is not in it right that's and that is actually reminding reminiscent of the uh, the original ultimate spider-man took a couple of issues for spider-man to appear yeah in the original ultimate universe mm -hmm. so i i i think i like that like little little carryover yeah, but yeah no it, it is a testament i saw uh yeah there are very few complaints about this um and i think that also it needed to be that way Sure. We needed to build this world so that we can actually like get to the Spider-Man stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for the next one. It's a good litmus test for like this line, and uh, you know, hopefully, the other Ultimate books, Ultimate Black Panther, Ultimate X-Men, mm -hmm. uh, feel just as innovative, but yeah. in a very in their own distinct ways. Um, and uh, it's another. Uh, I, I don't know how it's sold. I know it's sold out everywhere. But like, number one, it's a number one issue. Number two, you know, top talent yeah. of the industry working on it. Number three, you know, a new universe. And number mm -hmm. four, of course, you know, uh, the, the the variant cover game is out as out of the, out, is you know off the charts. Yeah. So we'll see how the um, how issue two sells. I mean, obviously there's gonna be a drop off, but hopefully not. Hopefully uh, there'll be a surge. It'd be nice. Yes. If people uh, people are like, what am I missing out? Yeah. On? Because this was it was so well written, so well paced. Yep. The, the art is like the two of them working together, like Chichetto and, and Hickman. It's just it's a it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful art makes makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um. So absolutely check it out if you haven't already. Um. Good luck finding it, but uh, yeah, worth checking out. Um. Joshua Link says Sabretooth War is also shipping twice monthly to really channel that old school feeling. That's yeah. Fun. I didn't also, know that. probably to get it in before before the end. Yeah. Uh, Thorn Identity, thanks for your support. Uh, I love when Tiffany says, it's all about character X and what he doing. That kills me. Literally, it, like right now, it is all about uh, Nathaniel Essex and what he doing. That's like, true. That's that what is, that book that is. That is what this, this, this is happening right now. Yeah. Uh, the infamous Mike Manhattan. Is Bendis still at DC or is he a dark horse fully? I don't know. I don't know what the what the Bendis of it all is right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, I don't see his name on anything at DC. So my guess is he's probably still technically employed or at the very least, like until his contract runs out. Sure. But uh, he's probably not doing anything at DC. Cat Loyal Defense Retreat. It's a bit funny that the original S uh, Ultimate SM was a way to get teenage Peter Parker's story. And now we have it for older Peter. Wish it was new reader friendly, though. Um, I think it is. I think it's just, uh, you know, it, it, they, they all ask you to give it a little bit of like every book asks you for a little bit of leeway, but I think this one is definitely I think this will remain to be seen if it's new reader friendly. I don't know if this issue is enough to determine that yeah. um, because, you know, I, I like to think that Peter has enough of, um, or Spider-Man just in general has enough clout throughout the pop culture uh, you know, zeitgeist that people kind of know what the origin should be. Uh -huh. And so you could see the changes here. The only thing of course is the Iron Man stuff. But again, for me having even forgotten it, I was just like, Oh, okay, cool. Whatever. Yeah. Like it just didn't face me. Yeah. I don't care. Uh, but um, what was I going to say about that? Well, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Uh, Dante Cook, thanks for your support. The paper quality for Poison Ivy changed. The first type of paper was really high quality. However, the new paper is not cheap, but it's not as good. Does this mean Ivy isn't doing well, or is DC doing something different? Uh, usually that means that like uh, they, they were trying something different. They could be switching printers. They could be it, reducing the, the quality just to just, keep... Here's the thing with paper. Paper costs um, fluctuate more than you would think that they would. Yes. Um, 
So oftentimes when you're getting something printed up, if um, one type or one company's paper has gone up, you may make a switch over in order to save some money. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could be something as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, it might not be uh, as, as, as nefarious as all that. Hopefully not. Uh, Bear Farmer, a, a testament to Hickman's writing. I read a whole Spider-Man book with no Spider-Man and was enthralled with every word. Go, yes. Peter himself was a little weird, but I love the rest of the world and can't wait to see where this goes. That's the thing. Like, it, it's, you know, I, uh, it, it, it is capturing what it feels like to be a like elder millennial who doesn't know if they've made the right decisions in life. Uh -huh. That's, that's what this is. Ironically, you know, the original Ultimate Spider-Man was like, let's get some new readers in. This book feels like, let's get some lapsed readers in. Yeah, I feel hey. like it'll probably be the same amount of people. <laughs> uh, Max says, hey guys, uh, hope you're doing well. I'm so glad to have my generation's Ultimate Spider-Man. I was born in 2003. I can't help but relate to Pete's new struggles and need for change. It captivated me. Mm. That's what it's supposed to do. I think that's what it's meant to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. So thanks, man. Uh, Girk Pectus, I laughed so hard in Echo when she got her costume that's supposed to represent her people, but it's just another generic MCU costume right out of Shang-Chi. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I feel like there is some... Um, I don't know enough about who where the designs came from. I, I feel like there was probably some amount of representation there. Mm -hmm. But I, again, I, I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly. for, for certain, but I like to think that maybe someone was in the room at least because it's like there needs to be some consistency with... By, like the looks for what they're going for. Exactly. Um, but you know, anyway. yeah. Anyway. Uh, and uh, Rami Darwish, happy Monday guys. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man was awesome and entertaining. Hickman never disappointed me except for ultimate invasion. Agreed. Yeah. It's the only time I was like, what are you doing, Johnny? <laughs> Jeez. But uh, yeah. So let's recommend some comics that are coming out this week that we think you should check out. Um, I am obviously going to recommend Nightwing number 110. Uh, I don't know if we are at this point where it's like, okay, uh it's the meme cover i've seen this meme cover before oh right 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 it's the yelling and the cat at the at the table meme yeah and i'm like okay like we're doing this now like that's that's where we are like we're just gonna do meme covers from now on it's it's not per it's not persistent it's not prevalent it's not even like a really big problem it's just kind of like i don't know if it really works for me mm -hmm. like i don't think it hits it, it is telling a story like oh is damien coming to is, is Damien going to be in the Nightwing book and he's going to cause some problems? That seems to be what the cover suggests. Um, or is it just that like they think they're so clever and they want to do memes? Listen, I don't know. Right now, I feel a kinship to that because our cat Ripley today knocked a... A full glass uh, candle dish onto the ground. Just like... Just utterly just, annihilated it, was, it, was, it. Everything was fine and then the world was in chaos. She was like Jeff Goldblum in, in Jurassic Park. <laughs> like, it's true. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So right now I'm like, uh-huh. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm digging on it. You can get rid of these. You can just keep looking. Okay. Um, Batman Superman World's Finest number 23 is coming out. Hooray. This is a great series worth buying. If you haven't already, pre-order the series. Dan Moore, Mark Wade. Yay. Uh, Superman number 10. This is Superman as a cowboy in the past. What? Superman has been sent to the past and he's a cowboy. Joshua Williamson. This seems to be a lot of what they've been doing. And Bruno Redondo and Calo Felipe. Yeah, it's true. Um, cover's fantastic. But uh, I'm excited for this. It's a fun story. So far, so good. Listen, what do you do with Superman? Yeah, you make him something else for yep. a little bit, I guess. Uh, Chef Zdarsky's doing uh, another uh, odd Elseworlds story. This is uh, not called Elseworlds, obviously, but it is in another universe. Uh, Avengers Twilight number one. Uh, Daniel Acuna is drawing it. I've seen the preview of it. It's phenomenal looking and okay. it feels really fun. The Avengers get old. It's, it's you know, it's, it's kingdom come in the more in the Marvel universe. Okay. So, yep. Okay. Uh, Joshua Williamson and Andre Milana's Cobra commander is coming out. I've been hearing some good rumblings about this. I'm going to give it a try. Cobra commander getting his own book. All right. I want to see how it, I want to see what this is. Sure. Okay. Uh, and of course, both of us are going to be picking up Wonder, Wonder Woman number Woman. five, Tom King, Daniel Samper. Daniel Samper is doing the work of his career right now. If you have not been reading Wonder Woman, at the very least, look at the damn thing because it is phenomenal looking. Yeah. But uh, it's also really well written. Uh, I am really enjoying this series. I don't know. You you like it too, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. Um, definitely, this book is doing something different. It's a different kind of Wonder Woman book. It's not expected and it needs to be different. Because Wonder Woman is not a high-selling book. It's not a very popular series, and it will only sell if you know people get on board. Uh, but it's uh, it's it's definitely worth checking out. Um, speaking of 
things that aren't worth, worth checking out. Uh, Jackpot's getting a book, and I just really wanted to say really quick, I'll be uh, dead in the ground before I ever read a book about Mary Jane having powers. And to tie it in with gang war, it's like really insulting. Oh, okay. Just wow. Like, that's... Eat me. I'm never going to read that. It's just like, it's almost like Marvel is mad that Ultimate Spider-Man is doing it. They're like, here, how about this? And uh, uh, friends of the show, Griffin and Ethan are doing uh, more Kill Your Darlings. Kill Your Darlings number five is dropping uh, this week. So if you are enjoying that uh, independent series, uh, you definitely don't want to miss the next chapter. Nice, 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 nice. I'm just pulling mine up. I know. Right now. Uh, okay. What do we got here? Uh, I'm not necessarily going to read it. I just want to give a shout out. Uh, cable fans, uh, cable uh, is going to have a number one uh, fall house of X's on that. So if you're interested in what's going on with cable, feel free. It looks like it's old man cable. Um, and uh, it's written by Fabian Nicieza. Mm -hmm. So that might be something you're looking for. Again, it could also just be an indicator of that. We're going back to yep, that. Yeah. Uh, after it's all over, we're going to we'll hopefully you like I, the nineties. We'll we don't know. We don't know. No one has any idea um but we'll 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 check it out and uh you know i might peek at it we'll we'll see yeah uh x-men number 30 is coming out <laughs> the high evolutionary i'm reading this <laughs> let's do this jerry duggan phil noto oh heck yeah hell yeah heck yeah uh justice league versus kong or versus godzilla versus kong number four uh brian bucoletto uh christian duque dudes I don't know. Uh, I I know you're not interested in this anymore, nope. but I like it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. Uh, Deviant number three. Uh, talk about um, rated M for mature. Oh yes, that's that's this series. Uh, James Tynan, art by Josh Hickson. Uh, yeah, this is Hickson. Uh, emphasis on that S because there's actually an S after the S, yeah. so I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is this is a dark one. So Sweet for for sure. You know, if you want to check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to see what this was. I, I don't know what it is. No, anyway. me either. Uh, it looks like uh, Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong is getting a monster sized uh, number one, mm. I guess, re release. Uh, so it's it's uh, 80... also combining both one and two. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's what it is. 80 pages long. Who knows what else? They what might... a weird decision. I don't know. Like, why? Yeah, other issues one and two of the wildly popular adventure. Because maybe some people missed it. So maybe, they... maybe they were like, oh, we could reprint it or we could reprint the first two issues into one book. Yeah. It, it costs less usually to do that than to do two different things. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Could so, be, I get it. Could be absolutely that. All right. Um, and then uh, if I read nothing else next week, like literally if I read nothing else, yeah. the only thing I will be talking about um, next week, 100%. Is John Constantine Hellblazer dead in America number one? Uh, written by Simon Spurrier with art by Aaron Campbell. Uh, folks, don't do don't do yourself a disservice. Get this book. I haven't read it. No. Get, get this book. Dynamic Duo's back. Yeah. The original team from the uh... these two are uh, absolutely incredible. Well, it was Aaron Campbell most of the time on. That's true. The um, Black Label, Sandman Universe, John Constantine Hellblazer, but Vice Vice Spurrier, Matteo Bagaro would also sub in sometimes, depending on what the story needed. That's true. Aaron Campbell's ca uh, art is incredible. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. Um, Seeing in person is a religious experience. It is absolutely a totally different experience to uh, see his uh, art up close. Uh, you've probably seen it in some other things. Trust me. If you have any love of all of John Constantine. <laughs> Get this book. Please. Comes out uh, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. The last uh, run was incredible. Yes. All and right. Cut tragically short. Yeah. Listen, if you like, if you like Constantine at all, and yeah. let's just say you're a Flash fan, and you're not loving the Flash on over there. You will love it over here. 100%. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just go get it. I assume it's a continuation <laughs> of the previous run, but who knows? I don't know. All I know is Swamp Thing's there. Dream is there. Oh. Totally makes sense. 100%. Yeah. Yes, this should happen. <laughs> because Dream interacts with Constantine. Oh, absolutely. Uh, in the uh, first volume. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Do hell it, yeah. Please. I'm so, uh, I'm like so excited. I can't. I, I know, can't. right? Somebody uh, oh. asked us if you've ever played Uncharted or Last of Us. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to remind people that you can actually check out Tiffany playing all of The Last of Us. That is to say, Last of Us 1 and 2 and the bonus materials all on YouTube.com slash at Comic Pop Plays. All links to any other channels are in the description below every video we make. But uh, you can also watch Tiffany play video games live on Twitch.tv slash Comic Pop or 
uh, occasionally simul streamed on the YouTube channel uh, previously mentioned. Of course, you can follow and subscribe to all those videos and channels on the description below. So check that out. But uh, yeah, you did play all of the Last I of Us. I played Last of Us and Last of Us 2. Uh, along you did play Uncharted as well, but I don't I think I played streamed. a little bit of Uncharted. And I played, I think I streamed part of the first one because I was like, oh, I should probably go back because I played like the more recent one mm -hmm. uh, when we got our PS4. Yes. And I like jumped into that, but I was like, I don't know what the story is. I think I liked the mechanics of that one more than I liked the mechanics of the earlier ones. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But it, that is a, they're fun games for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, no, they, they, they look great. Um, but uh, make sure to check out those channels as well. I believe you stream on Tuesdays and Wednesdays typically. Yes, but I think you're pulling me away this week. That's right. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. But keep an eye out. Uh, tomorrow, for, for sure. For sure. And we're going to stream something. Yeah, we don't know because you just I wrapped up Spider Man. I haven't 2. figured it out yet. I, I, I'm, I feel so badly. God of War Ragnarok has been sitting, waiting to be played. I just don't know if people care about it at this point. Like, do I just play it on my own? Do you, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Well, we, we know <laughs> that uh, we appreciate all of you. Thank you to our super chatters for sponsoring today's show. Thank you to our chat for being here yes. and supporting everybody and being cool and uh, and respectful and sharing your opinions yeah. about these books that we talked about. And we will see you guys next week with another episode of Off the Rack here on Comic Pop Returns. Of course, if you want more, you can always subscribe and check out more. Uh, Daniel Hospitale says, Sal, what's your favorite Tom King run? Uh, you know, they always, they, 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 they blend together at this point. Like, it's um, hard. I, I think it's Gotham City year one, but, uh, you know, but run, but yeah, I, I don't really have a run. I mean, certainly not as Batman, you know, I guess if I had to compare, I think I like his Wonder Woman run better than his Batman run. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for, for sure. But if we're talking, this is like any of his stories. It's I love Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Yep. Um, but Mr. Miracle is uh, an incredible experience. It is indeed. Strange Avengers was so good. That's too. the thing is that like it's it's a problem because there's so many good ones. Um, you should do a classic like Silent Hill. Oh, somebody knows their uh, their audience. Silent Hill Two is my favorite video game. <laughs> yeah, and you've played it uh, on stream before. Yeah. I it doesn't mean I can't play it again. I wonder I'm if we've ever. Saying. I don't think I've ever re-uploaded those That's... to the channel, so I'll have to check that out. Re... Well, then we'll just have to restream it. Oh no! You can do the whole suite. Ding, ding, you can do ding, Silent ding. Hill One. Okay, you can so do Silent, Silent Hill Two. Hill 1, I gotta tell you, Silent guys, Hill Three. I do love one story, but the fact is, the play mechanics in that I can't. It's tough. I can't. I, I just... There's a reboot, isn't there? Not like a like a like a like a not a reskin, but like there's a updated version, isn't there? No. Mm. Weird. No. Human Target is also perfection, so mm. you should check out that as well. Um, Silent Hill for the Room, Shattered Memories, uh, that one in where it's cold. The Shattered Memories. Okay, the one with the truck driver. Origins. <laughs> downpour yeah homecoming there you go, there you go. <laughs> you, yeah 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 but uh all right we want to thank you all for uh supporting us and uh for checking us out we do appreciate it make yeah. sure uh, to check out everything else we have here on this channel and over on youtube.com slash comic pop thanks a lot for watching everybody thank you tiffany for being here no and we'll see you guys next week with another episode so long everybody bye 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 bye, bye.